Hi, this is Rohas Nagpal. In this video, we are going to look at some of the basic ways in which a 4G router, which is used for a Wi-Fi network, can be secured. Now here I am taking the example of the Airtel 4G router. I have been provided with a website name that's airtel 4 groutercpe and a username and password. If you misplace this information, it can usually be found at the bottom of the router also. It's on a sticker pasted there. So I enter my username and password and log in. Now in the first screen that we see, we see an IP address. Now this is the public IP address, which means every device connected to this Wi-Fi network would connect to the outside world using this IP address. Let's look at the product information. Here we can see a list of devices that have connected to our network in the past or are currently connected. We can have a look at, for example, there's a Blackberry which has been connected. We can see the MAC address. We can see the IP address. And if we want, we can also kick it out of the network from here. Let's go ahead to the LAN. Let's click here. Now we can look at the DHCP settings. Uh, it's not very complex to make out what is happening here is. We have the start IP address 192.168.1.1 and the end IP address as 192.168.1.254. What this means is any device that connects to our Wi-Fi network would be allotted an IP address within this range. Next, let's click on Wi-Fi. In the Wi-Fi settings, the first thing we notice is the SSID. To put it simply, this is the public name of your Wi-Fi network. You can change it to something which no one would recognize. That's usually preferred rather than leaving it like this because here anybody could make out that this is an Airtel device which makes their job a little easier if they're trying to hack in. We see our security settings here. It would be reasonably secure to put WPA, PSK and WPA2 PSK. Let's go ahead to the access management options. Now here very interestingly it shows us three different SSIDs so to say. Now let's first try to understand what is happening here. For that let's go to Wi-Fi multi SSID. Now what it says is that Wi-Fi multi SSID provides a maximum of three different access channels for a Wi-Fi network. Simply put, it's like we have three access points. So we can set up three different Wi-Fi networks, so to say. Now, what is the advantage of something like this? Let's say you have a guest who's come home. Now, he needs internet access to check his emails or browses some websites. Would you really want to give him access to your network, wherein he would be able to connect to your network printer, open shares, or any unsecured devices? Logically, no. So what you would do is, you would set up multiple access points. One for your family members, which allows them to browse the entire network. And one for your guests, where you have restricted access only for certain activities. So in this case, we can set up up to three of these networks or access points. Let's go to the security. Now here the first thing that we look at is the firewall level, which says low. Now let's take it to the custom mode. Now there are quite a lot of options that we could configure here. We could look at the MAC filtering, IP filtering, URL filtering, and of course we would enable an option to block denial of service attacks. Now let's focus on the MAC filtering for some time. MAC or media access control number is a unique number which is allotted to every network interface, which means that no two devices in the world would have the same MAC address. Of course, you must bear in mind that MAC addresses can also be spoofed. Now here, if we say disable, what we mean is we do not want to enable MAC filtering on this Wi-Fi network, which means we would not block or allow access based on MAC addresses. If we choose blacklist, that means we are going to now give a list of MAC addresses which should not be allowed to access. If we choose whitelist, we are going to give a list of MAC addresses which are to be accepted and no other MAC address is to be accepted on our Wi-Fi network. The same goes with IP filtering and the same goes with URL filtering. Now to look at this a little more in detail, 
let's go to the mac filtering option now here we see that right now it's the default is on a white list so we could add here we could see a list of mac addresses these have accessed our network in the past and we could simply click on one of them and white list it which means then that only this particular mac address would be allowed to access our internet similarly we could add multiple mac addresses alternatively we could go to blacklist and then we could add a list of mac addresses that are completely blacklisted on our network if you look at ip filtering we could do the same thing but this time based on ip addresses in url filtering we could blacklist websites or of course you could whitelist websites that's all for now i hope you find this video useful